I founded Northwest Battle Buddies 13 years ago. That is a nonprofit. We provide professionally trained service dogs to veterans with PTSD. We gift these professionally trained dogs. And we are nationwide and veterans come from all across the nation and come train on site with us for five weeks, learning how to navigate life with their service dog. And in the last almost 13 years, we have gifted 257 service dogs to our American heroes and we have not lost one veteran to suicide. That's awesome. It is. I mean, think about that. The suicide rate among our American heroes is 22 veterans a day. Yeah. That means tomorrow, 22 families are going to be planning funerals. Right. I mean, when you think about that, but but it's a silent, it's over 8,000 lives a year and it's a silent epidemic. If people are not telling it and they are not, because veterans are not going to come and tell you they need help. Right. They are strong men and women of courage, selfless beyond selfless. Yeah. And they aren't going to do that. So, so what inspired me to found and start Northwest Battle Buddies was, you know, it all comes down to legacy. And I was just kind of talking about, you know, it was really important to me that I instill in my children, my values. Well, where my values came from was from my parents Mm -hmm. and especially my father, you know, so my dad, um, if you go to NorthwestBattleBuddies.org, you will read my father's tribute. Mm -hmm. And it actually starts with something I wrote to him when I was a young girl on Father's Day and I had framed it, (laughs) but it was my tribute of love to him and thanking him for raising me the way he raised me. And then I I, I put that in there because it really, when you look at legacy, it's not just about, you know, what you're leaving them financially or what it is for them to have a good start in life. And I believe in all that. I Mm -hmm. believe in, you know, setting my, my children and my children's children up with wealth and with everything else, but it's not just wealth. Wealth isn't just monetarily. Wealth, in my opinion, is values and character and relationships and 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 um, and skills and mindsets, right? I would even say that's even more important than the than the money. You know, the values. Absolutely, it is because because without the values, you'll squander the money. Right. You'll squander the gift because true wealth is wholeness. Mm. How many people have wealth and they? They end their life in suicide. They have everything the world can give them. And they end up living, ending their life because they're lonely and broken. And so, you know, yeah, that's a lot of layers and that's a lot of podcasts, you know, to talk about all (laughs) that. Um, But the fact is, is that my dad raised me to believe in God, family and country. Mm -hmm. And that when you're in the presence of a veteran, you're in the presence of a hero, even though he never considered himself one. Um, I would watch my father go shake the hand of a veteran and thank him for his service. Be, be amazingly uncomfortable if anybody came and thanked him. Right. And he also taught me to believe, like I'd already mentioned, you don't know what you don't know. And my father would never allow us to quit. My father, it was all about perseverance. It was all about character. And he commanded respect. Yeah. My father commanded respect in every room he was in. He had the, the most incredible wisdom. And when he ended up passing away, December 20th, 2011, It was one of the most devastating days of my life because what I was realizing, not only was I so devoted to him, and I I love my mother and she lives with me now and she's 80, but she was a soft place to land. And she was just, she balanced my dad very well because he commanded respect and she was, she just was this unconditional love, you know, amazing woman and still is. But the fact is, is that my dad was a source of strength on this earth and no matter what I needed, I could call him. I spoke to him every day throughout my life. And I total daddy's girl all the way to the end and still am. And he, no matter what problem I was facing through my divorce, through all kinds of life, I could call my dad and he would have this way to speak peace to me and speak wisdom to me that on this earth gave me, he was such a source of strength. And when he died, it's, I've heard people say, you know, this broke me and you would have never heard me say something like that. Yeah. But when my dad died, I felt like it broke me. I didn't know how I was even going to do one more day. Right. I didn't know how I could even wrap my mind around the thought that this source of of, uh, security and uh, wisdom that I relied on so greatly, I didn't I didn't know how I was going to do my next. Yeah. I just didn't know I was going to do it. 
And then, and I think about that a lot now with my, tw- my boys, they're 29 and they have their own homes. One's married, about to have a baby like any minute. Oh my gosh. And um, the other one, you know, yeah, I mean, they're both successful. They're both amazing. And I think about what I've learned with my father and how I need to be for my boys because of transition in life and how things happen and setting them up and preparing them and teaching them through all stages of life. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I, I thought a lot about what I want to leave them when I'm gone. What do I want to say to them when I'm gone? What do I, I even have journals that I write to them now so they can access it when I leave this earth. But anyway, my father, obviously the way I'm saying it, he just, he is everything to me. Yeah. And so I, I heeded what he said when he was raising me, and I adopted his belief systems as my own. So when a veteran came into my business, I was I was working at Man's Best Friend, I was washing a dog even, and a veteran walked in, and because he was a veteran, I stopped doing what I was doing. I had somebody take over, and I went to serve him personally. And he wanted his personal dog to be trained to be a service dog, Sammy. She was a yellow lab, and she was young enough and had temperament enough. And I had trained service dogs before, but I had never trained a service dog for a veteran with PTSD. Mm. And so I assessed her, and I just started to do what I do, um, training her, obedience, getting her, getting her ready to navigate the outside world, malls, you know, theaters, restaurants, you know, public transportation, the airport everything that you can imagine a service dog where they would need to go. But then I was also learning about the symptoms of PTSD and the the tasks that she would have to learn to mitigate the disability of invisible ones of war. So it takes months to do that and to do that right. Mm -hmm. And in my foundation from Schutzen and competing was just excellence in all things, precision, right? right? So anyway, when it came time for Kevin to start training with me, because it doesn't matter how well you train the dog, the dog at the end of the day will only be as good as the handler. Right. And so Kevin needed to learn how to navigate life and maintain and use this tool so he could gain freedom and independence in his life. And so when I started to, you know, talking with Kevin and spending time with him and being out and working in public, I started to learn about the suicide rate. You know, this was 13 years ago. I don't watch the news a lot. I'm busy with my, you know, nose to the grindstone, right. doing what I do and being trying to be productive and all that kind of stuff. And when you hear about the suicide suicide rate of 22 a day, it's just a number. For me, like in the beginning, it was like it was like every other tragedy or bad thing that happened in the world. Right. But when I started to hear his story and it became personal, and I started to hear about his last firefight the some of the six of the of the men and women who were in that firefight with him at, that survived it after coming home had committed suicide on american soil gosh he was a front gunner in the army and even though they survived that conflict they came home and lost the battle it's like how does that even happen i know you know and and kevin had been self medicating with illegal drugs for years mm. Prior to coming to me. Now, by the time he came to me, he was heavily involved in the VA. He was he was not using drugs anymore. And he was on a good path of holistic healing. And that's why he had wanted his dog to be a service dog. His counselor had talked to him about what she could do for him or, you know, that it might be a path forward for him. Yeah. And when I was out training with Kevin, I saw him find courage inside himself to lead her where he was afraid to go alone. And I saw him be willing to do for her what he was not willing to do for himself. And it was profound to me when I saw him start to have a panic attack and I was teaching him how to use her and how to use her for grounding and pressure therapy to get him out of his mind and back into the moment of now, how she helped. I taught him how to use her to help mitigate his hypervigilance and even have the courage and use her for social mobility, just walking into those crowds and yeah. doing all the things. So I was asking him to do everything he had been avoiding because he wanted to live his life with freedom and independence and not be bound because veterans with PTSD, their world is extremely small mm. because they're isolated. They right. just don't go out. And when they do go out, it's quickly and it's like in and out to get the milk. It's in the middle of the night. It's when there's not a lot of people there. They are not going out and, and to their children's social school activities. Right. They're not going to the ball game. They stay at home and then they hear about it. You know, they're not in the workforce necessarily. I mean, it's like, it, and so it's not just our veterans, but it's society mm. is robbed 
from having these amazing human beings invest in their community and bring even greater value of their character and perseverance and everything about them that caused them to do such a selfless act in the first place, which was serve our country. Mm. You know, so Kevin finished his training. I was watching him walk away from our very last training session. He had passed his testing. And as I was watching him walk away, head up, shoulders back, walking with Sammy at his side. She's just following beautifully. And I was watching him walk away and I was hit with the feeling that I had significantly made the difference in the quality of somebody's life. Hey.